Hi, my name is Bianca Woods and I'm here today to talk to you a little bit about slide design. In particular, bad slide design. Most of you have probably done at least one PowerPoint or keynote presentation in the past, be it in front of your classroom or during a meeting at a company. What the problem is with most people's slide design is the slide doesn't always help their presentation. In fact, the way that a lot of people use uh, PowerPoint and Keynote takes away from what they're actually trying to teach the learners. What I'm going to do today is I'm actually going to pick apart a bad slide. And because I'm feeling brave today, we're actually going to pick apart a slide that I personally made. I made this slide fresh out of university during my first year of teaching art. And you know, I've gone through all the PowerPoint presentations I've ever made, and this truly is the absolute worst slide I have ever created. And I'm brave enough to admit it. So let's talk about how I could have made it better and why it doesn't work in the first place. So here's the slide. There is a lot going on there. And that's the main problem. First, that background. Sure, it was great on my first page of a slideshow where it just had the title of my presentation. With that nice dreamy landscape. It you know, went along with my topic of Salvador Dali and surrealist art. But once I got further into the presentation and kept using it, boy, did it add a lot of noise to my presentation. It takes away from the pictures and it also makes the text really hard to read. I've got white text on front of, in some areas, light, light, light blue. And that is not easy to read from far back in a classroom. Also, let's talk a little bit more about the text. In particular, the content. Boy, did I go on an info dump kick that day. There is a lot of information here. So much so that it'd be really hard for my students to read it while I'm also talking at the same time. I made the common mistake of putting my talking points in my slide. In fact, I pretty much wrote myself a nice little script up there, didn't I? I did not need to give the students all this information, especially since they're not art history students. They were elementary students. Some of this is great because it paints a nice picture of Dolly, but really, I could have boiled that information down a lot more, and I really didn't need to put the little script for what I was going to say on the slide itself. Last but not least, the image. I liked this picture, and I know the students did too. They thought it was pretty cool. But it's small, and there's a lot else going on on the page that's pulling attention away from it. If I had made it bigger, it would have been easier for my students to have really appreciated it. So, how could I have fixed this kind of lame slide? Well, first, let's get rid of that background. It's distracting, so why not have it be something kind of plain that's a good canvas for the other content I'm going to put on it? The text. Really, more than a sentence is just too much information. So perhaps I can boil it down to the most important parts. And, you know, if I need to have that much information or I need to explain that much information, I can't put it on one slide. Maybe I should make more than one slide to say that information. But really, just boil it down to the key things and don't use it as my own talking script. Last, the image. I need to make it big enough where people can see it from far away and I need to make sure the image quality is good so that they can see the detail. You know, those are just a few little small things but they improve the slide greatly. And those are key points that you can use to design any slide in a clear and concise manner. My name is Bianca Woods and this was me picking apart a really terrible slide.